Hello, everybody. Hi, how's it going? Welcome to uh, the very first episode of Jungle Crawl Classics, a DCC RPG slash D&D Tomb of Annihilation um, marriage that I have um, been waiting, oh, I don't know, almost like a qu three quarters of a year to like get off the ground. So <laughs> uh, it's been it's been a while and I'm super happy to find like this, this get this going and share uh, this 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 fun time, I think with with you all. Um, but it's not just about me doing this thing. It's about playing with an amazing group of people. And uh, so let's let's go ahead and introduce everybody here. I was so once again, I'm Eric. Uh, my pronouns are he him and I'm, a, I'm Eric Vulgaris on everything. And I'm a, I'm a tabletop streamer. I can see all my stuff randomly throughout the week, and you, if you're here, you probably know who I am. Anyways, Kika, over to you. Hi, I'm Kika. My pronouns are she, her. I occasionally stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Kika. That's twitch.tv slash K-I-K-K-A, where I typically stream old RPGs and voice act every single character in the game with some, you know, other stuff thrown in. I also make music and do cosplay and you can find me on twitter at twitter.com slash kika vo uh and throw it on over to robert hey i'm robert um i don't have a huge online presence but every so often i play in eric's once upon a game um i'm uh every so often in twitch chats and hanging out um hoping like very excited to play this game um, have talked with Eric a lot about it. Uh, I'm Demosthenes everywhere. That's Demos, the knees with underscores in between the words. Um, yeah, and then I'll pass it over to Frank. Hi, my name's Frank. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and I am Frank TV on Twitch, and I'm Frank Albanicious on Twitter. I do D&D &D stuff. I do D&D &D note taking stuff. I'm a web developer, and I make D&D &D app stuff uh eric what's up yeah awesome i didn't know that that's super cool yeah so we're all excited um if you don't know what dcc is uh that's okay um neither do anyone here no neither does anyone else here uh except for except for me i know a little bit i i have read and played a couple times and i'm super excited to to get this into it so um on a from a really you know 2000 20, foot level it's basically dungeons and dragons only it's a little bit more sword and sorcery um, it's not quite OSR. I would describe it as like OSR adjacent, if that means anything to anybody. Um, but ultimately, um, what you need to know is that the way this game is going to start out is that we all start in a dungeon, and we have all created five characters together. They're all level zero. They all have a um, you know a, a profession, like you know like if you would if it was D and D, all you would have is a background. Uh, you would have a couple little um, stats and here and there. But um, don't worry, uh, that will it's it's all super super similar. Um, and we gotta have different words for for different things like agility and dexterity, but you know what those mean, right? So it's not a big deal. Um, the rest of it, the rest of the kind of really nuanced things we'll see later on after level zero. Um, level zero is very very much just rolling d20s and hoping that luck is in your favor and surviving because we're doing a funnel. Uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics. The way you do character creation is entirely random. You everything is forcefully random from your race to your stats to your background to your professions to what you carry is all randomized um, based around that. And who survives this first dungeon are your level one characters. These will be our heroes for the for the next round. Um, so expect crazy spells, weird things with chaos and law, and 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 undeath and and curses and evil magics and gods and demons and being big damn heroes from the get-go all right so be expected that uh you'll be doing some cool stuff those demons and things like that aren't waiting around to your level six you're going to be dealing with them and uh just believe in yourselves believe in the heart of and power of friendship and you'll get through it and you'll be okay all right so that's sort of the the big big picture of what dungeon crawl classics is and uh with that i'm i'm super excited to to kind of get into it uh, I try not to TPK everybody. I see you in chat all talking about that stuff. And yeah, so none of these characters really have backstories except for Kika. Kika wrote a three-page backstory for all of this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, half kidding. So anyways, with that all out of the way, how about um, we just go a little bit and say what our characters' names are and what their what their backgrounds are just to, to get started before we jump into the, the module that I have prepared for us today. So uh, Kika. Uh, Hi. Okay. Hey. 
Hi, I am Kika. I have the characters Vilshan the First Strike, or Shrike, who is a gong farmer. You know, he goes out at night and picks up all the poop in the town. I have Selbatond Kensur, who is a potato farmer. Barsind Redmane, who is a gravedigger. Sarvin Rendmeyer, who is a barber. And Osin Vond, the elven barrister. Oh, you have an elf. Uh, yes. That's that's cool. Elves are elves, halflings, and dwarves are not very common um, to to get as it, when you when you generate and char- randomize your characters. So that's important. Um, I also a, have a cow. Ooh, you have a cow. <laughs> I have a cow. Oh, see, that's important to know. Yeah, everybody. So sometimes your your backgrounds give you random things like that, and so it's cool to know that you have a cow. Yes. Uh, with you on this adventure. Does a cow have a name? Um. Is it a dairy or a, or a beef cow? I think it's a dairy cow. Mm. Her name is Wendy. Wendy. Wendy the dairy cow. Yes. All right. I'm, I'll be rooting for Wendy. Me too. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thanks. Um, how about uh, we go over to, uh, to, to Frank? Sure. Um, I have Clarence, who is a human healer. I took only first names because I think they might all just die. Um, and I have Randall, who is an elven falconer, falconer, who also has a falcon that I don't have a name for, but it's pretty neat. Um, I have Nina, the elven sage. Uh, she's got these tools. That's pretty exciting. Uh, I got Gus, the human outlaw. And I have Leopold, the human scribe. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Robert? Yeah, um, so I have uh, Jack Amir, the guild beggar. I have Theodore Devinson, the human scribe. I have Valero Tonkers, the costermonger, which I found out today is someone who sells like poop and stuff at a market. Um, I have Reese Milo Fox, who is the golden glass blower, and Pennyworth Thistledown, the halfling glove maker. The halfling glove maker. Yeah, he makes very small gloves. Cool. Yeah, I know. You, no one else can use the gloves unless you have a baby. <laughs> it's probably why you're an adventurer. It's a pretty niche market to be in if you're not in a little like halfling, little you know, shire or something to sell in. Um, babies need their gloves. Yeah, babies need their gloves. Yeah. A very cool thing. Robert, can you also can you turn up your mic a little bit more? All yes, right. Cool. So. Um, yeah, so we're playing a, a special module. Uh, it's called Sailors on the Starless Sea. And I've chose this one as our funnel because this was my first funnel. And it's hella fun and amazing. And it's everything that I've always wanted. And I just am very excited to share it with you all. So we're not going to worry so much about why we're all adventuring together for the first part here. Okay. We're going to pretend that for, for whether it was you've always had a uh, a sense that maybe your stars were never right, that you always felt like maybe you were trapped in another body. You always felt that, like, you know, that there's we got to be better than, than what's what's for us here. Uh, whether you got punch drunk on the songs and uh, tales and stories of, of heroes long before, or maybe some that are around now. Uh, maybe you were, had a vision. Maybe you just had to get out of town and you got to make ends meet. But regardless, you're not a hero. You're not yet. You're an adventurer. You're a reaver. You're a cut purse. And you got to make do and you got to survive and you got to got to figure out where money comes from in one way or another. And so for today's, for today's adventure, you guys have all traveled um, to this land called Chult and um, outside of this big old city. The city that's you realize that you're too uh, too poor to stay in for very long. Um, you have you've decided to go uh, venture forth into the jungles, and uh, you came across this keep, and this 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 keep is where we're going to be uh, beginning our our campaign today. So you stand before this ruined keep, which squats atop a low craggy hill. Uh, its walls are toppled stone with with massive granite blocks. Um, so right now, like you guys have been, you like you're seeing this as as you guys are climbing up this sort of um, very very well worn ragged 
covered in in vines and and weeds and moss like this sort of like stone ruinous almost like a switchback stairs kind of up that that sort of or more more serpentine than switchback that's kind of like brings itself up this hill it's this long path leading up to this keep um from from where you are standing right now you can see the keep is kind of like maybe about a half mile away um but but in that distance you can you can see there's some sort of like vague rough banner um fluttering in the wind it's very ominous um, the air is overrun with the with a sense of pestilence. Uh, flies bite at you the closer you get to this place. Uh, mosquitoes linger around and loiter, um, looking to score easy marks on you. Um, there's just an odor of rot and decay um, that just seems to emanate from this area. Uh, it's almost as if the hill, the very hill, is decomposing. Now... You turn to your companions, and you ready your weak, meager weapons. Maybe you look to Wendy the cow for support. But uh, it's time to begin. So um, once again, you can see the you can see the keep that's way in the distance, right? Uh, you can continue up this path. Uh, maybe you want to find your own way. Uh, it's up to it's up to you guys. But right now, you're kind of like on this path right now. Um, you can see up ahead between you and the keep. Um, you can see that the 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 old portcullis is raised here um it's very easy to see that this path has been tr treaded on recently so you're not the not the first people going up this path in, in recent time um, although the rains may have washed uh most of the obvious details away um but other than that uh there's something weird there's something you can see between you and the keep there's like you're not really sure from here it looks like some some kind of weird plant in the road Two plants, maybe? Uh, you have to get closer um, if you want to want to look at that. But yeah, um, your goal here is to explore this keep and and and, and get rich or die trying. Uh, I know that uh, I know that Nina, the sage, is going to be curious about those plants. Yeah, um, she really needs to check those out. Maybe do a drawing of them. Cool. So she might rush ahead of the group here to go look at those. Yeah. Cool. Does anyone anyone want to join Nina? <laughs> no, everyone's super quiet. <laughs> no, I I think that Theodore will join, um, because he's a scribe and so he wants to get True. inspired. By okay, cool. Um, so um, I don't know what number that is, uh, for your characters, Frank. What's which one's Nina? Two, three, four, one. Uh, three. Three. Two. Oh, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess Osin might go along just out of curiosity. She is an elf. And... That was your f fifth one, right? Your fifth elf. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, your cows, your, Wendy doesn't like being here, by the way. Oh. No. Get some, some light ambiance going. Are we going up here? Great. And uh, Robert, um, who was who was uh, of your party going up there? Uh, Theodore, he'd be two. Cool. Theodore. So it's Theodore, um, Ozin, Osin? Is it Osin or Osin? Osin. So Theodore, Osin, and Nina. Um, you guys approach the, uh, these these plants. And you maybe you're, 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 you're finally like crested the hill and you're getting a better look at these strange plants in the road. And your your stomach lurches as these are not just plants. They are people um, tied to, to these posts. Um, and, and it seems to be some strange uh, purplish vines have sort of um, bound them to these posts. They're they're long dead, right? Um, and and these vines have seemed to have made use and 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 sort of a. Uh, made themselves home um, in, in these people for, for a euphemistic term here. Um, some of the vines kind of like come out of one of their mouths as it's kind of wraps itself around the stake and other ones around their arms. And um, They don't look like anyone you know. At least not, not from this distance, right? But it's an ominous sign. There's two of them there. And once again, these plants are absolutely um, stunningly gorgeous violets that, um, for all intents and purposes, uh, uh, it's a color of, of a flower you have never seen before. And 
nor has anyone ever seen something so um it's like it's like the, if if you were in fo they look photoshopped almost right they look like someone has turned the the saturation of the color super high up like it doesn't seem like it could be even that possibly bright you want to get closer for a look or or is this this is this comfortable Osin would vote that we throw a rock in it in that direction to see what happens before getting closer. Uh, Nina says we don't need to ruin the the specimen. We need to. That's this is a new plant. But there are a lot of them. Like I'll hit like three or four, and we can see if like something bad happens. But oh, there's plenty. Okay, but I want to get like a sample once we're done. These vines aren't, yeah, I want to be clear. These vines aren't anywhere else except on these posts. They're Are they not, coming up from, like, the ground? You can't tell. It's just like it's just this mass of vines. Okay, throw the rock. Yeah. I will be watching. The rock hits with a dull funk against, against these vines. Can I take a sample now? I step back. <laughs> I Nina. take out Go ahead. I take out um something to write with. I take out my quill. Nina and my book. I I'm going to assume Nina has like a vial or something and like a knife to just like kind of scrape off like maybe a tip of one of the vines or yeah. something. As you approach the vines they're they're living, they're they're writhing. They're almost feeding on on these people. Um I think she still does it. Yeah, you get up. You get up, to. you get up close, and you you try to um, to get a a little um, sample of of the yeah. flowering buds from the vines. She's captivated. This is brand yeah. new information. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and um, as you as you approach, and 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 it, it doesn't seem to even acknowledge that you're there. The closer you get, it just seems to like. You almost like the vines kind of like move a little bit and like like they're like growing still, and and as you you, you scrape something off, yeah, you scrape a flower off of it. Oh, beautiful. Okay, I've jarred up. And yeah, I walk you back have. To the group. Yep, you have a vibrant little purple flower. You guys, this could be worth money. We could stay in town. Why are we even trying to stay in this keep anyway? It's gross out here. I just pass Robert's character. Like, my character passes Robert's character a copper. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, I think Theodore would respond by saying, where's the story in staying in town? I, I don't know. Well, maybe we should go get more of these flowers. They seem to be free. You're welcome to. All right, I'm gonna take as many of the like pieces of this thing I could put in a bag or try to, or Nina is. Okay. Yeah. I'm uh, tallying the amount of flowers that they're able to take. <laughs> yeah. For risk assessment calculations later. Uh sure. You take. Um, you're able to get. Uh, you're able to get four flowers. Okay. Um, in into a into a jar. Cool. Um, I put one in my hair, Nina. Yeah. Um, you put one, you put one in, you put one of those vibrant flowers into your hair, and you turn around and you face the group, and it's it's very pretty. And then you feel one of those vines lash out at you and try to grab you. I try to not do do? be grabbed by vines. Yeah. Uh, squirm away. Okay. Um, so go ahead and, and try to resist being being grabbed by this thing right now. Okay. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do um, opposing. Uh, describe how you're how you're resisting. Are you trying to like force these things off of you? Or are you trying to? Well, I think um, I've got my hands full right now. So the best I can really do is just kind of like jump and like dance out, try to like shimmy away. Okay. I don't think it's gonna be very successful, honestly. No. All right. Uh, so um, we're gonna, we're gonna do opposing roles here. Um, sounds like you're using agility. Yes. So I just roll agility. Uh, yep. So a d20 plus plus your agility. And I'm gonna roll um this thing's um. Well. That's right. Well, you that's horrible. You rolled a one. Uh, yeah. 
No, you you are you are unable to. Um, maybe you are stunned by by just this the strength of these vines. Um, the vines um, quickly grab you like a, and constrict your your arm, and then they grab your leg. You are now constrained uh, by by you are pinned by one of these vines um, as as the body on this stake almost lurches to this unnatural life as these vines begin to um, overwhelm you, seeing yourself as a uh, as a good host. Uh, Nina's going to try to yell help as long as she can. I yeah. imagine it might go for the mouth, though. Yeah, you roll help, and um, I think that's where we're going to call for our initiative for the three of you. Um, are the vines coming out of the ground, or is it from the flower? No, the the vines are coming from the, the mass of... of um, people from the people oh. on those stakes okay so they're shooting out towards him and yeah. have grabbed him okay. yep and uh initiative c20 plus agility agility modifier yeah agility modifier of course okay not great sweet that's a good roll yeah okay um so f- for all of us here uh so that means it's kika you're up first um, okay. You see, you see, you see. Nina um, has been grappled by by these vines. What do you do? I think Osin is going to rush forward and take Nina's knife and try to cut the vines. Yeah, cool. So make an attack roll against these vines. And a knife would be a dagger, which would be plus agility. Um, no, it's a plus strength right. in this game. Okay, it's old school. Okay. So that's no modifier. 11. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, you're able to, you just keep cutting and cutting and cutting, but it's, it's, it keeps growing. It's like, it's like, can, it can grow faster than you can cut. Um, <sighs> they need help. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're trying. Um, it just, it just, it's getting worse, right? As soon as you cut off the, around the arm, um, it gets the leg even tighter and you cut the leg and it goes back to the arm. You know, it just, there's just, it, the rate is, it's, it's not fast enough with this little knife. Your knife's not too shabby either. It's just it's it's too fast. It grows. It's growing and writhing too quickly. Cool. Just, yeah. Um, what are you gonna do, Robert? It's up to you. Um. So, Theodore has a dart. <laughs> um. Uh. So I get. I mean, <laughs> doesn't seem like it would be very useful. Uh, I might just end up hitting. Nina. Um, I mean, I guess I can try and like rip the vines off of them. Yeah, you can try that. But, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't want this person to die necessarily. Uh, yeah, totally. All right. Uh, so this is Theodore, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Theodore rushes to um, try to to get to free Nina. Um, it sounds like a strength roll to me, right? Yeah. Power. You're gonna try to uh-huh. mightily lift these vines and and break them where where a knife could not. Yeah. Um, you do it. Which is <laughs> well done. Uh, you're able, to, Nina. Nina, you're you are free. You are free from the vines. Oh, thank God. Yeah. But um, at that point. Let's do a um let's let's figure out who goes between because we rolled the same thing. Do you want heads or tails? Heads. Heads is you. Nina, Great. you have a you have a chance to respond. What do you do? I run away. Yeah. Uh real good. Uh I'm gonna run um and just like run behind what was your character's name, Robert? Anthony? Uh Theodore. I'm running right behind Theodore and using Theodore as a shield just to like while we back up. Um, awesome. So then for this round, so like once, once I go after this, um, just for, for clarification's sake, um, when it's your turn again, your other characters can enter the fray on your initiative. Everyone will just go off of your initiative. And, uh, for this case, right, it was just the, your, your subset of your party was scouting ahead. And so we're only playing with them for now, but in the future, when we're dealing with the whole group and stuff like that, just roll the initiative of your best character of your five people. Um, and, and we'll just go from there and they all act on that initiative, right? Cool. So yeah, so you hide. Um, well, these vines, um, as as 
once they've started to get a taste for you, um, they don't stop. They, they first, they kind of like almost like they fall as, as they lurch towards you. And then they kind of pick themselves up again and they're, they're able to move. They're able to, to awkwardly shift and move using their human hosts. Um, as, as they, they weren't, um, impaled or anything on these stakes. They were just bound to them. And, uh, yeah, now these, these vine things want you. So, um... You try to run away. I think the first one's going to come over to Theodore, who was close enough to lift off the vines from Nina. So you seem to be the most appropriate target, right? Yeah. Let's see what your heroism gets you. That's probably bad. Does a, does a 21 hit? I would imagine a 21 hits. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. The D4. I do two points of damage to you as these vines tackle you. All right. Uh, do I note? Can I note that anywhere, or do I? Yeah. Just kind of... uh, if you, what's your HP for it's for Theodore? Four. Oh so man. Easy okay. Math. <laughs> cool. Um, and then then it attacks again. A thirteen. Uh, that'll hit two. Okay. For f- four points of damage. Yeah, I'm, I'm gone, skis. Nina, oh my God! So Nina, you watch in horror as for as poor Theodore is is overwhelmed by by these plants as as Theodore just kind of disappears in this wave of green. Uh, can I can I have last words? Like, oh, totally. <laughs> uh, I totally look to Nina and be like, tell my story. So um, there's also I also want to bring this up because you are technically now considered dead. You are um, you could be left for dead too, but there's a point in DCC where if you're able to resolve this fight in a couple hours and you check the bodies, there's a chance that you might actually still be alive. By and it would be a luck roll and stuff. All right. All right. So you're not technically you're you're for all intents and purposes right now you're dead, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a chance you still might be lingering about. So, anyways, yeah, poor. All right, first first casualty is Theodore. Ooh, first um, one. Yeah, scratch. Uh, do strike through your name on on the uh, on the sheet when you get a second. But now it's uh top of the initiative order. It's back to you, Kika. So does my rest of my party come in now, or is that yep. next turn? Okay. No, no. This is the new. This is the ne- uh, the next round of initiative. So it's totally up to uh, to you. All, all your stuff can operate now. If you want your characters who have been kind of watching in horror as this is happening or want to investigate, they could totally write in there and do some stuff like that. Right? They're they're close enough to that they could get into the action. Right. Yeah, I think they probably would have heard the commotion yeah. and come to help out. Exactly. Like last round, they heard the commotion and they probably were on their way. And this round, they could probably act in the stuff is kind of how I picture it. Because I'm doing yeah. this in sort of theater of the mind style. So that sounds good to me. I think first up to go in would be uh, Selbatond with his pitchfork. Sort of like rush in there and sort of like start jabbing at the vines with the pitchfork. He's used to taking that thing to plants. Yeah. Okay, so so Selvatan goes in there and, and just and lurches with their with their pitchfork. Yeah, maybe like might try to yep. while it's stabbing the vines, sort of like flip him off of uh Theodore there. Yeah, totally. Try it. Um that's a uh a, an attack roll, obviously. Yeah. Ugh, eight. Not not enough. Your pitchfork is getting stuck in the vines and you can't get that leverage over it. Oh no. Um, it's okay. No, your pitchfork isn't, isn't stuck, but it was like getting stuck, and you're able to pull it out. And okay. it's got to try again. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, your other characters can go too. It's not just like you pick one of the characters. Your whole stable of characters gets to go right now. Yeah. Uh. Good old. Uh, was that K one, if I recall? What? No. Who? Oh, so it's that was K two. Yeah, yeah. Your potato farmer. Velshondifer, who is K one, will mm-hmm. be going next. With their trowel. Wah, another eight. <laughs> I think that just sort of That's, misses. Yeah, once again, you're not able to even like uh, really like break into the, these masses of things, right? These of, of swarming vines. Then uh, Barsand goes next uh, with their shovel. <laughs> That's not great. 
Um, so remember, uh, a, 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 a critical hit. Weapon. This game has critical hits and fumbles. By the okay. way, a one is always a fumble, and a twenty is always a hit. Okay. That applies to monsters too. Okay. Next will be. Uh. Next will be Orson with their quill. Orson's got, or so Orson after running away is gonna be like, no, I gotta help, and and goes in. Uh, she's gonna use it as a dart. Oh, she's gonna throw it as a dart. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So she gets a plus one on that. Thirteen. A thirteen is enough. Yay. Um, yeah, that's good. Nice. One d four with. I don't add my agility on this, do I? No. Uh, no. No. Yeah, old school. Ooh. Four damage. Nice. I get it in its soft bit. <laughs> oh, save it. Okay. Uh, it yeah your your dart your dart stabs in, into the heart of this of this body of uh, this writhing mass. It doesn't really look like it's behaving any different, but uh, it definitely uh, us us as players know that it did some damage to it. Um, another flavor type of thing I want you to know is that I typically am not going to describe a lot of the you know if you do one damage to something you actually cut it. It's going to be like if you kill it then that you do the blow that, that actually does something to it. The rest of it is like it losing stamina or like just gets out of the way at the end and you're all, it's on the ropes and I'm going to be using a lot of that kind of language. Okay. I describe stuff. Okay. But yeah, that was a, that was a really solid hit. Um right? You go right like you threw it right into like the bullseye of this mass and somehow uh, evading everybody. Um good throw. But you probably yeah. don't have a weapon anymore. <laughs> uh well, she's not dead. Yeah. And Sarvin's gonna take out their razor and go for it. Right. Sarvin doesn't have the best hats. Poor Starvin. All right, poor Starvin. All right. Sarvin does two fives in strength and agility. Yeah, but they got a pocket full of dreams. That counts for something, right? Got a pocket full of scissors. A pocket full of scissors? Really? <laughs> that's what well, they got? Yeah, scissors. Oh boy. All right, well, that's not good enough. So, uh, is that that's all your characters in, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, then we, we go over, I think it's you, Robert. You're next up on the initiative order. Okay, so... Um... One of my characters acts, or all, they all do? They all act. Okay. okay. They all act on your initiative. All right. So I think then the uh, Jack, the guild beggar, who has a sling, will try and uh, swing at the um, one that um, killed Theodore. Oh no, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because there's two of them. Sounds good. Strike true, friend. Strike true. Um so the on the weapon, the first number is how much it's added to the roll? Mm -hmm. Or is it just Okay. Oof. Probably not, not great. Not enough. Yeah. Not uh, not enough to do it. In that case, um I think Valero Let's see how still getting used to. Alright, he is what's he got? Oh, he's got a knife. Alright. So yeah, Valero's Valero's gonna rush in to the um and to the right one as well. Okay. Um, and he's gonna try and cut at them. Um is there any like would there I mean, obviously these things are very weird, but would there be any, is there any place that like I would be trying to stab them or am I just trying to cut them? No, it's a, it's a writhing mass that's, that seems to be stemming from these corpses, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to start slashing at it. Yeah. And no, not great. Not, 
Yeah, no. All right, let's just move down the line then. Uh, my uh, glass blower <laughs> is going to attempt to uh, do the same. I think he'll go for the left one though. Okay. Um, he's going to rush in with his hammer and try to bash it. <laughs> Not good enough. <laughs> That's why I imagine you're you're all ganging up on this thing, right? You're all like swarming this this mass, and it just like doesn't care as it's devouring your friend. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, like, man. Back, back to the shadows. As it does not care. Uh. All right. And then little little Pennyworth is gonna come in with his all, and he's gonna try to get this guy. He's gonna try to do something. <laughs> Pennyworth, our boy. <laughs> oh, poor Penny. Penny, Penny is unsuccessful. It's actually the worst out of the whole group. That is a really uh, shabby, shabby start, my friend. It's More like Penny worthless. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'm proficient with throwing shade. All right. Um, yes, my characters fail at what they're doing. So you, your characters have failed. Uh, it's your turn, Frank, because you won that 50-50 split, so it goes to you. Um, so Gus is the one who looks over and it's more like Penny Worthless, because that's the kind of thing Gus would do. He's four. He's the human outlaw. And then he, like, takes his short sword and runs straight at the thing and tries to, like, sweep at the feet of it or whatever feats and vines would be. Okay. You rush. Vine feet. Yeah, the, the roots. You try to get to the root of the problem. I like your style. Whoa. Okay, so it's just that first year before the parentheses on the short sword, right? Yeah. Great. Haha, -ha, our first fumble of the night. Roll your luck. Dang it. That's what you get for throwing shade. That is what I get. Roll a 17. What? Yeah. Uh, what is your luck modifier? Zero. Okay, that's really not good. Um... You accidentally strike yourself for normal damage, plus an extra one point. In addition, you fall on your back and you're unable to right yourself until you make a DC 16 agility check. Uh, so you have gotten the worst fumble on the table as well. Um, so Penny Worth, team? so literally, good job, Penny Worthless, as you stab yourself for for damage. Roll damage. Plus one, right? Yep. Whatever your damage is, yeah, plus he's one. Mega dead. <laughs> Kill yourself. <laughs> So Gus <laughs> runs up, and as he stabs, he's, his his fingers slip, and then he just runs straight into his short sword, I guess. Yeah. Or like a vine goes and pushes it through or something. I don't know. It's not pretty. Yeah, you try to go for the roots, right? So you try to get under it or whatever, and you slip, and you just impale yourself, right? And uh, right through the heart. Damn it, Gus. He you was the chosen Gus. one. Um, I know. Okay, Nina takes Theodore and just like drops Theodore and says, like, I will remember you, and then runs forward to dagger at the vines. Um, this music got intense. Got, got dying. Oh, Nina's doing it. Is that damage? Oh, yeah, 14 hits. Nina's a beast. Three points of damage. Um, were you hitting the one that was already that the dark got thrown it? Or are you hitting the one that um? The one that was against Theodore. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, that one's okay. That was the one that I darted. Yes. It will pay for what it did to Theo. Vengeance. Vengeance Man, will be had. Man, is super dead. Um. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Clarence, the healer has holy water and Clarence has never seen anything quite as evil as this um, so Clarence is going to run up with his holy water and just try to like spray it over both of them be gone evil beings yeah doesn't, totally doesn't do anything no do you, do you spray <laughs> the water on the plants or the people the plants right um, do you what <laughs> let me ask you about this holy water um, okay. Where did it come from? Is it is it blessed by a particular god? Is it just... It's from home. It's the last of the holy water I have. So I, I assume, yes, it's important. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> it, 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 the, the plants, the plants don't, you know, they get a little bit twinkly. They got a little dewy, like they got some dew on them, right? Clarence finds himself way too close to these things. Um, okay. Now Randall with the falcon, who is now named Duck, um, says attack, and he sends in the falcon to attack, which I don't even know if that's a thing you can do, but it seems neat. To yeah. Just like try to pick out a vine toward the top on the left guy. Yeah, um, roll... I mean, you're trying to get this this thing to... Trying to command this falcon. Yeah. Um, so let's just make a command check. Okay. What is that? Oh, uh, it's probably wisdom. Okay. That's not a thing. Intelligence? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, intelligence. Cool. Personality? Right. Uh, I was, it could be personality, but... Uh, well, I, got I, think, I think intelligence here, because you're trained with it. Yeah, well, that's you more than quit. enough. Yeah, so it obeys you. Um, so let's 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 attack with this falcon. Okay. Um, so the falcon probably has like a, a claw, a beak attack, or something like that. So okay. it's, and uh, roll uh, with plus one. Excellent. Um, Eleven is not enough, but it, it screeches. It screeches. It might and, be and, distracting. Yeah. Good work, duck. They might duck. have to duck. Is it duck the falcon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Geeka. Um. Okay, Leopold will spit a dart at the other start at the same dark target. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a hit. Another dart. Whoa. Oh, that is the best dart anyone's ever darted. Yeah, it 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 rees as as the the vines go limp, um, and slunches down. Um, the other the other mass though. Uh, seems to just kind of step on it and continue to um, lash around at everything around you. Um, Leopold so, just like shouts, I got one! I did it! Yeah, you killed it. It's down. I so, think that's all my characters. Yeah. All right, now it's my turn. Uh, poor Jack. Jack Amir. Coming after you, Jack, with one of these. It's 18 hit. Yeah, I think it does. Okay. For two points of damage against Jack, the beggar. Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm <down. laughs> oh, I got another one. <laughs> he had one hit point. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um... Um, this one's going to, it's, with its other arm, it's going to lash out at Nina. 19? Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Uh, for four points of damage to Nina. Nina's pretty dead. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but she died for Theodore. It was honorable. Okay. It's my turn. So, so I, I imagine, so I, I kind of just imagine it's kind of like one of those alien scenes where uh, the vines just kind of like these this massive vines just grab someone by the ankle and it's like no 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 as you're grabbing the ground as it just like devours you. Oh yeah, I'm like fairly certain that's how uh, Jack went down. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's top of the order again. It's to you, Kika. Can Bill Shondafer high five Leopold as a bonus action? Yeah, totally. Leopold hasn't high five much. It's awkward. <laughs> and then really Defer whips out his trowel and goes for it. Okay. Maybe says a ha ha as he lunges for a four. Not enough. <laughs> so it just dinks off. Yep. And he just looks really disappointed at his trowel. It's okay. We will. We still believe. And Selbaton comes in. Oh. With another four. Gosh, I'm gonna roll like eight fours. Yeah. Are you going to? <laughs> Here comes my grave digger with a shovel. So one d twenty. No bonuses. Nineteen. Hey, there you go. 
1d4. Bah! Ooh, Get a good thunk good. for three damage. Yeah, you did. Good job. Yep, and uh, shout out to you, John. Thank you so much for for the resub. I appreciate it, buddy. For Krom. Good, we could use it. We're, we're getting killed by these vines right now. Sarvin comes in with their razor. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hit. Sarvin, yeah. you're, you're... <laughs> I forgot to add the minus two, but I think that's That's still good, that's still good. Okay. So what does it look like when, when Sarvin uh, hits with their, this razor? It's just sort of like, eh. He doesn't really know how to fight, so he's just like sort of awkwardly chopping at it with the razor. Well, it's working. Bits of plant matter are going everywhere. And... Is it? He has a minus two modifier on his damage. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> one, one you damage, do, yeah. yay. It's your instincts are not to harm something. So you give it a really good, you give a vine a really good shave, right? <laughs> just take a little off the top. Yeah, just a little bit off the top. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. And um, can Orson grab her quill from the felled one? Yeah, you could do that as an sort action. Of like, oh, as an action. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's going to do that as her action then. Cool. Yeah, you pick up your quill. Then... Put your hand in the, the, the guts of this thing, the viscera. Your hand comes out and it's it's somewhat sparkly. Ooh, like like shiny. the guts the guts are kind of shiny. They shimmer in the, in the light of this this in the, in the jungle sun. I um raise it up in the raise my uh, shimmery hand up in the air in prayer to the god of shine. Ooh, the god of shine. Yes. Okay. I can notice That's that. all my characters. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Um. So then after you, and it goes over to um, uh, you, Robert. All right. So uh, Valero will. Uh, take his knife again, and uh, he's gonna try to uh, just carve up some some vine. Okay. And he will hit. Yeah, awesome. Oh. Heroic, thank you. Heroic logic, thank you very much for the subscription, for the sub, buddy. Thank you. Oh, for one. For for one damn. Slowly, slowly and steadily, we're getting there. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's used to, like, carving apples and sh for samples at the market. He's not... Yeah. He's never had to cut a vine before. Um, and then... Um, Reese uh, will uh, take a swing with his hammer. See if he can crush some vines down. Come on, Reese. You have a hammer. You're a glass blower. Not enough. Ugh. Not enough. Not a, you. You start squishing down some of these vines, and they just start slithing and slithering around. All right, and then uh, Pennyworthus will uh, will try to make a make a name for himself, a different oh. one. Okay. And and, and won't. <laughs> oh, not enough. That's okay. That's all right. You're, you remain Pennyworthus. <laughs> I know, but I like. Whoever says that dies, so I don't know. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, next in the order, you, Frank. Um, Clarence is standing, I think, n at least kind of like beneath... Uh, Nina and Gus are dead. Okay, so Clarence is standing beneath one of these vine things and takes out his, like, uh, holy symbol mm -hmm. and just tries to start praying because this is not a place that he expected to be. Um, and he's doing his best to dodge incoming attacks, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Leopold's going to try to make magic happen twice and do another dart. If, oh, does he have to pick up his dart? Does he only have yeah, one dart? You, there's only one dart. You have to pick it up. You have to spend your action to pick it up. That's not great. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crap. Uh, he's going to go try to run and get his dart. Okay. Yeah, you're able to run and get your dart. Okay, that was five. And then Randall says... Uh, it tries to like point with like his hand to like the hawk and like do like a whistle to get it to like actually attack with the beak better. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, do you need me to do the command again? Yeah, of course. Personality. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, intelligence or personality, depending on your style of how you train it. That's good. 
It sounds like personality, by the way, yeah. he's gesturing to it. Uh, yeah, that's enough. Attack with the bird again. Let's oh go. my god, bird. Your bird fumbles. <laughs> oh my Wait, god. Wait, a two is a fumble? Oh, no, no, a one. Whenever you roll a natural one, it's a fumble. So, um, not great. Uh, keep in mind, you guys can burn luck. But uh, not not now. Um, not on a fumble. So, uh, let's say the luck of a bird. Luck of the bird's a plus one. You roll a d20. Uh, That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, so, so in this context, um, it goes now down for, lucky. yeah, so it's, it's, it's claws are, uh, it's claws get snipped off by, by the vines. Like it, like the vines crash on its feet and then like you hear like a crack sound and, and, and then the, the but the bird's able to like peck and get away, but it, it's, it's fluttering and it's hurt. Um, it he's just, been declawed. Yeah, essentially. Okay, that's not good. I think that's all my good. characters, though. Okay, poor, poor bird man. Poor duck. duck. Okay, uh, then it's to me. So I think I'm gonna. I think. Oh, let me let me show off the ones that are. This one's dead. So this is the only one that's left. Um. Who is K two? Selbaton. Coming after you, Selbaton. The thirteen hit. AC is nine. Yeah, so, so that's yes. a hit. Two points of damage. Ow. It's going to latch on you again with its second vine. Just don't hit. Uh, 21. D that doesn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for four more points of damage. And Silbaton is down. Oh, no. Oh, Selbaton. Selbaton is downed. All right, that's my turn. It's up to Andy's you. He's going to be all alone. <laughs> all right. Can Wendy go into a rage and charge it? Yeah, you totally can. It's, it's top of the order, it's to you. <laughs> really? Wendy can charge it? Yeah, totally. That's what it looks like, right? Yeah, Wendy's pissed. It attacks the vines. Oh. I can't. Horns. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, just, I cannot get over the sheer funniness that more like Penny Worthless, and then you go stab yourself and die. <laughs> oh. like, I mean, the fact that he died just was just. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. What, what do you think a bonus, like an attack modifier for a cow, would be? Um. I mean, it's probably like they're pretty big, right? So probably plus yeah. two. Nice. Plus moo. Plus moo. Well played. Sixteen. Oh, that's, a, that's enough. Uh, no damage. Probably like a D four. <laughs> plus two. No, it's a cow. It doesn't. It's just. It's just using its weight. It's a D four. Three. Oh. It's it's it's, it's getting in it. Wendy's way better than most of these characters. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's getting trampled by this cow. So now there's this giant cow and, and on st stomping all, on on the mess of these vines, uh, yep, raging out. It's a mad calm. cow. It's literally a mad cow right now. Okay, Osin's gonna throw her dart. Okay, yeah, you recovered your dart last turn, so you can yep. you can throw it. And she's gonna yell, "Shiny quill!" as she throws it. That's not enough. Um, wow. Do a 50-50 for me. Um, and so do you want, I'm sorry, actually, let me do it and let me ask you, heads or tails? Heads. Okay, it misses. It doesn't hit, there's no friendly fire. Okay. Always choose heads. Yep. Heads, heads except never Except when it's, <laughs> except when it's tails. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Good job. You avoided incidentally hurting one of your fellow players. The person with the lowest luck. Or Vel... Okay. Velshondafer is gonna go in. Okay. The gong farmer. With his trowel. Ooh. Not Tink. enough. Not... Not enough. Un it's unfortunate. Okay. Sarvin. With his minus two attack. 
Ho ho ho! <laughs> All right, servant, servant making moves. Roll damage. <laughs> D four minus two. Hey! <laughs> servant kills it. Servant kills it. Sarvin. Oh, Sarvin. Sorry. Yeah, it goes down. Um, so Sarvin, Sarvin has a trough or, or a, a trowel, right? No, he has a razor. Is a razor. Barber. Oh yeah, the barber. Yeah, the the barber who who doesn't know how to fight is just like, and the next thing you know, there's just just a bunch of like leaves going up everywhere, and and it, it rides and it, and it, it dies. Good job. Sarvin says, ah, "That was a close shave." Not oh. even realizing the joke himself. Oh God. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. That's but, really um, good. These these horrible creatures they they start pulling uh, once again like there's there's this kind of like shimmering uh, I, I I imagine it almost looks like mercury um, there's like and, and there's something of that sort of kind of like color um, that's sort of like what's the sap of these of these beautiful vines right and it just seems to kind of like leak into the ground um, but you guys you take a moment to um, get a hold of yourselves. Wendy is furious still and like stomping on the ground. And if no one does anything, uh, Wendy's going to run off into the woods. Uh, Driven mad with rage. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Someone, oh no, someone oh no. will have to calm we, we down, all Wendy. Try to calm if you want. Uh, I have a couple characters that have plus one personality. So that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think Sarvin's going to go for it. Okay. Try to calm her down. Uh, Sarvan, come on! You're Not doing enough. so good, buddy. Uh, no one, no one gets hurt. But uh, yeah, Wendy, Wendy runs off into the jungle. I hope Wendy survives. Maybe she'll become like a barbarian cow and show up again later. <laughs> <laughs> a great favor was shown to me, my people, and my kind when I was young. I am here to return the favor as it like comes out with, like a giant battle axe or something. <laughs> yeah. No. Alright. Yeah, Wendy Wendy's gone. Poor Wendy. Um Yeah, okay. Not 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 the worst thing in the world. Um what do you guys want to do? Do you wanna see who's alive? Yeah. Wanna take take a take stock of everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think um I think Valero probably um, kind of tries to like get Jack like out of the like if he's in the vines, kind of pull him out. Yeah, if he can, or like through the body. Um, um, yep. Unfortunately, uh, Jack is dead. Um, based on the rules for the only one who could possibly still be alive right now would be Selbaton because they're the one who died in the same round. Um. But uh, so you, they're they unfortunately they are they are dead. In fact, they were probably trampled by poor old Wendy. Um, they don't look very good. Either. No, they're they're a mess. They're they're mangled and tangled in these vines and poor. Uh, I think uh, Valero would put two copper coins on Jack's eyes. Um, mm. like just can kind of say like, kind of, uh, one last charity for you. Beggar. Oh. In my head, they were friends. Are you gonna leave them there? Um. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, um Clarence is gonna turn to everyone and say, "Thank God I used that holy water. They could have killed all of us." Where oh, jeez. Uh, my guys are gonna check on Selbaton. Yeah, Selbaton went down last round. Um, you technically haven't bled out yet, so there's a chance here. Okay, how does this work? Does uh, Selbaton make a, draw luck? The dead character makes a luck check. Okay. Oh, Selbaton. 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 Oh my God! You are you're hovered around poor Selbaton, uh, doing everything you can to um. Who's who's the one who's probably mostly helping Selbaton? Uh, probably 
probably Voshandifer. Okay. Yeah, Voshandifer, you go go help uh Selbatond. And it it's it's hopeless. Poor it he's he he's gone. He's, it's too far. He, he it's it's and then all of a sudden cough. Cough. It's a miracle. Uh Selbatond um awakes. Um you you return with one hit point. Um but um you see Selbaton uh Selbaton starts coughing up some of that silver fluid and their stamina is permanently decreased by one. Well Shondafer just holds Selbaton's head up in triumph like the victor of a boxing match. Yep, so Selbaton <laughs> Selbaton's alive again, but with Selbaton one hit point. is just like completely out of it while it's up there and he's just like uh... Yeah. Good job. And Osin is writing notes about this whole encounter. Of course. Of course. So, um... So that... take that red axe off my cell baton, please. Yes. Um, Clarence will kind of move bodies at least off the road. Um, but I guess we need to get somewhere. This is not good. Barson <laughs> feels very uncomfortable leaving bodies out. It Can runs I... counter to his vocation. Oh, yeah. you're good at this. He's a grave digger. Let's do it. Yeah, you uh, want to dig some graves for these people? Yeah, with my trowel. Right here? Yeah, okay. Clarence will help. Yeah. So you, t you oh, take no, some... Shovel. Yeah, you, t you take some time to rest up and, and dig some graves. And, and, and you mark them for, for your fallen comrades. Put up like a little warning sign. Do not pick flowers. Damn it, Nina. Yeah. Um. You can't help as you spend your hours doing this. Um. In an almost magnetic-like fashion, the mercury-looking uh, sap seems to always be drawn to where you just put these graves. What are you gonna do about that, if anything? Just seems to like pool that way, like it just wants to just trickle that way. You 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 stop it and then it pulls up and then it starts to divert itself and and come back down, like a little like flow of the sap. That's no good. Uh, we should probably do something about this, guys. What do you guys think? Do you guys have anything? I mean, you don't have to. It's just it's happening. I. It's suspicious. I mean, our. Our goal is to like find a place to stay, right? I mean, it's it's getting dangerous out here. And what can we do? Your goal is not to camp in this keep. Let me be clear. What is it? To get rich. Oh, okay. Or die trying. Well, there's riches that way, and not here. But my figuring is that this stuff came from the vine things and the vine things eat dead things so maybe the this weird sap stuff will get in the dead things and start eating them and grow new vines and we'll have to fight more vines on our way back while we're carrying all the treasure and all super weak from getting all that treasure we yeah. could try burning the bodies um, Valero would say that he has flint and steel. Yeah. Is what? Uh, uh, flint and steel. Ah, yes. Um, if we need to start any fires. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you bury the the two um, vine ridden bodies as well? What do you do with those? We'll burn those two. Let's burn yeah, everything. Good. Burn the forest down. Not not that. <laughs> <laughs> okay um are you it's it's obvious on one of the bodies the of one of these old bodies that they were never um they they kind of died with their 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 gear on them so much uh one of them has a uh is still carrying a short sword and a dagger um or osen would probably request that she have the dagger so she can remain armed after throwing her quill. Uh, Leopold would be happy to take a short sword. Cool. 
That's okay. So, and so it was. Cool. Yeah, so, um, good job. And then the next step here is, you can see in in, in the not so far distance, the, the shadowy silhouette of this keep um, with its with its banners flying over it. Um, there's some kind of strange, like, dusty smoke coming in the distance of this keep. Um, there's a sort of, like, you know, the path that you're on kind of leads to, to the entrance of this keep. There's a little tiny, like, old moat that's been eroded away. There's a little bit of, like, wooden kind of planks that are over it that lead to the portcullis. Um, but, the, you know, there's... It's a keep, so... And, and, like, you can definitely see some of the back... Like, the back of the keep is kind of, like crushed and like folded in you know like like the back part of the wall has been like kind of collapsed um really what you see up front of you is you see the portcullis um the left hand um keep sort of uh the tower right like one of the towers is up um I don't, i'm not sure what you call the, the top part of a tower but like that's still up there like that retaining wall over the um over the gate is still up and then there's like a definitely a, a to the right of it a, a tower that's intact but the rest of the keep, you can't really tell other than behind all of that, you see a lot of ruin. So what do you guys want to do? We got to get in there. I mean, do we have any better idea than just walking straight forward and going to the front door? Um, I think Pennyworth would be trying to find some other um, way in. Yeah, I'm um, kind of kind of curious. Like after watching what happened last time, trying to maybe not walk straight into the danger. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Can um, Osen help with that using our heightened senses? Uh, yeah. But in in what way are you just helping look for a, a good way to enter? Yes, she's cool. more scanning. Are you guys going lot. to the left? Yeah, okay, so I guess since you're kind of approaching this keep head on, I want to know if you're going to the left or to the right, like around this keep, because I imagine you're both going to like, you know, walk the kind of like the perimeter somewhat stealthily to find a, a, a way in that's not through this gate, right? That's what I'm hearing from you, but I just want to know. Yeah, yeah I think I think Penny would go to the um, to the left. I think Osin will go with because splitting up the party more is not a good idea. Okay. Um. You know, it, if there's something out there, someone needs to be able to run back and warn the rest of the par party. Yeah. <laughs> Make a thing so quick. It says like scouting, you know. And that is, um, that was Valero and Osin, right? No, Penny, Pennyworth and Osin. Oh, so, Pennyworth, uh, five. Yeah. And Osin is five as well. Okay. Um, you said the left, right? Yeah. Cool. That's the way that's close. You're, you're approaching sort of where the ruins of this wall are. By going this way, which is cool. Um, this wall has collapsed here, um, sort of like spilling these these old blocks of stone, um, kind of on top of another. There, uh, you can tell right now, like just based on the way this rubble pile is set up, it's precariously balanced, um, almost like a, a half fallen Jenga tower. Um, but you, there's definitely there's an entrance like you can see up this this ruin like this ruined pile of stone. Um, you, there, it's a it's a way into the into this keep. That's not the the gate, but um, but it might be dangerous. Yeah, it might be dangerous. Um, I mean, I am light of foot, uh, yeah. and I am sharp of eye. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you have those elven eyes. Yes. Yeah. The My heightened senses. <laughs> what do your elven eyes see? Um, what do my elven eyes see? Uh, can you make it just give me a, an intelligence check, right? You're perceiving it, You're trying to analyze it. Okay. But I, does my heightened senses give me anything? 
Yeah, uh, let's say it's a plus one. Okay, cool. So that negates my minus one. Hey, yeah. Um, you can you can see where the sort of like the the major blocks are on this wall. Uh, and if you want, you can you you kind of share it with um. Oh, uh, I forgot Valera. It's not Valera again, right? Penny. It's Penny White. Penny 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 yeah, Penny. Penny so you share it with Penny. Um, like yeah. Oh, if you step on these stones here, you can get up, right? Yeah, there, you find a path that that doesn't rock the boat, so to speak. Yeah, I think uh, Penny would go for that and uh, attempt to make it over. Yeah, and cool. I would back up. And since Penny is light, I will trust that Penny will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Penny, you make it. You make it over the rumble, uh, the rubble, and you're you're in the courtyard of this of this vast um, ruinous keep. Let me. Uh, I would make sure that, like, I wouldn't just, like, hop down into the courtyard and be like, I'm in here, now I can't get out. Like, I would yeah. I would stay at the position where, like, I'm, like, looking into the courtyard, and I, but I can back out if I see, like... Yeah, yeah, so let me tell you what you see here, right? So, um, you see a couple things. Um, first off, I think closest to you, uh, you see an old well, um, just, just hanging out, in, kind of in the middle of this courtyard with some, some tracks going towards it, um... The rest of this place seems pretty pretty quiet. Uh, so so there's a well um, that's closest to you up front. Um, to your left, like if you went to the other side of this keep, there's a there's a sort of a sunken pit of um, sort of like a um, what do you call it in, the, in a road? Um, uh, a pothole. Yeah, a pothole. Right, like it's like a, it's like a sinkhole uh, with some kind of like smoky dust. The stuff that you were seeing in the distance is coming from this sinkhole. Uh, also, like there's nauseous fumes, and but kind of from where you're at, like the smoke ain't it, the smoke ain't right. All right, that smoke ain't right. Um, there's there's a ruined like burned out building, um, that somehow like it, it, you can't really tell it from here, but it has some kind of writing on the doors. Um, it's solid stone, and and it seems to still be like barred, like from where you're looking, because uh, it's still mid, it's still midday. You're able to you're able to gaze this out. Uh, so, so that's kind of like all you can see from where you're at. I mean, of course, there's like that tower, um, right? That's next to the keep. Yeah. Um, is that, there? That's I it. Can I see the like portcullis from here? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, it's about maybe like 150 feet. Okay. Is there anything like going on there? Like, um. No. All right. No, it looks huh. eerily silent, except um, faint. Faintly below you, like you don't, you're not sure how far down. It's like this faint, faint echo, but you hear, you hear some rhythmic pounding of drums. <laughs> I mean, that's terrifying. Yeah. Um. I think are the is the park close open or closed? It's open. It's open. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh. Uh. I think I would turn back, like kind of go halfway back so I can see um, Osin. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of, uh, I guess, shout out, like, it looks to be clear. Uh, I think the front is safe. All right, we should tell the rest. Yeah, and let the rest know that you can go. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, so w are you looking for signs of, of activity up there? Uh, yes. Near the, near, okay, never mind. Can you make me a uh, an intelligence check for me? Yeah. Or before we do that, yeah. Before you go to alert people. I want to give you a fair shake. Cool. You see everything. You see everything. Um, no, that's... You see something suspicious up there. You can't you can't make out from what it is here, but there's something definitely above, um, like like lurking above the the gatehouse. Lurking above the gatehouse. Yep. Okay, so like not, as I'm you're like, not alone, oh. but it's like inside. Like you see a shadow from it, like inside the little like covered spot of the gatehouse. Like like it moved. Like something shifted in it. Uh, was would this be after I said? Yeah. So you're like, okay, wait so a second. Like, yeah, like I would like say it, and I'd like do a double take and be like. I would probably not yell it out. I would actually like go back yeah. to Osin and be like, We're we're not alone. 
I just saw like I just saw movement above the gatehouse. We should not go that way. So you yelled out that there was that it was clear. So the if there was a person up there, they would think that we thought that it was clear, but we know that it's not, and they don't know that we know. Clever, very clever. Well, what can we do with this information? Um, hmm. I don't know. Perhaps there would be some way that we could get the drop on them. Or we could just go around the gate. Is there any way up onto the wall? Uh, yeah, but you would have to climb over some ruins to like get up to that wall. Would I be able to access that wherever that was where I saw the shadow if I was on top? Yeah, you would be. Ugh. Um, let me let me draw you a kind of a cute little short little picture to give you an idea. Okay. Um, right. So like from the path, um, you can kind of see like. Right, something like so like this is the entrance, right? Um the where you guys entered is back here. Like this is like where the ruins are. And you could see that like if you kinda climb those ruins, you can kinda make it to this part up up the uh, up the up this place. I mean, how how difficult would it be for uh, Penny to climb up that way? Like, would it be like as a halfling, or would it be like? No, you could, you could probably make it up there. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. Um, You're light of foot, and and um, I'm pretty. And with uh, with the help of of uh, Osin still giving your their their eye their elven eyes uh, to you, you can probably get up there. Okay, uh, I think I would, yeah, and I was like, perhaps I can go up there mm -hmm. and um, get get the jump on them, as you say. Yeah, you do it. All alone? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. M maybe assess the situation first before jumping. Yeah. And if there's trouble... Sorry. Run away. You're very smart. Cool. Yeah, make me so <laughs> so you're able, you're, one intelligence. you're able to get up there, right? So go ahead and um give me give me another um intelligence check as you you're you're so you made it up the wall, right? You're made up the wall and now you're kinda trying to see what's inside that gatehouse. Um not from the not from the ground where you were originally, but now that you have climbed up and you're kinda like looking like a like a flank in. Yeah. Yeah. And not not the worst, but just about. I got a, I got a one. You can't, um, you can't make you can't make out from where you're at. You're gonna have to get closer. But if you get closer, um, your your heart tells you, um, you know, like if something's out there, maybe maybe like there's some rocks that rumble, right? Like as you're <laughs> like getting close, and then you you hear some like you can't really make out what what what's being said or anything like that. But um, you definitely think that like, oh no, did somebody hear me? And now they're kind of like looking around. So like, if you got if so you couldn't you can't see what it is. You might have like they they have no one's investigating anything yet. But if you try again, it'll be really dangerous. So what do you do? Right, there's a chance you could be spotted or or whatever. But you know, so you you don't you don't have any chance. You don't have any any luck right now. But if if you if you push it, you might be able to get get the information that you want. But you might be found, or or you can back away. I think Penny's gonna push it. They okay. uh, they did not like being called worthless. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm gonna give you what you see, but this is a question of if you can do it stealthily. So like, can you give me a, a um, right? I I think I saw a stealth like an agility check, right? Okay. Oh, well, it's not good. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I gotta roll. Okay, Ooh. no, that's pretty bad. Um, so you're seeing as you as you are scouting along this this path, um, you get a sight of two um, fell creatures um, lurking above this gate uh, this gatehouse. I'll, I'll reveal them to you. Um, 
There are two men with bestial horns uh, and heads of rams. Um, and they, and and one of them um, spots you as you get close, and it, it roars out with a with a uh, sound. Uh, the other one rings a gong, and a loud gong goes off as as you all. Everyone hears that. Um, as as rather than um, and one of them um, seems to run away while the other one wants to uh, come after you. So one is going away from you, and poor Penny, you are getting chased down by um, this large goat-like man. Um, he's got an axe in his hand. Um. Orson's not in a position to help you up here. It's it's yeah. you. It's you and this this goat man. What do yeah, you do? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run. <laughs> like yeah, that's Penny's good. just gonna. I don't gonna. I think I'm gonna just uh, like. I'll start yelling probably like goat men, goat men run <laughs> like help Yeah, we are not alone uh, kind of like Shia LaBeouf like the no 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 yeah, like, <laughs> yeah totally um, yeah so here's my question for you though to get down um, you're if you're going to run away from this thing uh, you're, you're going to have to make sure you can get down these this rubble carefully because you could get up carefully when you're not pressured right but now now that you got goat man breathing down your neck um are you just gonna be like fuck it let's go let's go and just like just hope for the best or are you gonna be try to be careful right like what's what, what are you gonna do um i'm gonna no I'm, I'm like i'm trying to get away from this thing i'm not gonna slow down i'm gonna like glove maker she's got no uh <laughs> um it's like skills, um, yeah. So it's like, yeah, she's just gonna go down. Okay, uh, roll luck for me. Yeah, because this is like you just being like, "Fuck it, I'm out of here." Um, Oof. what's your luck? Uh, seven. When you roll luck on these types of things, you have to roll less than or equal to your luck. So miraculously, you're able to just kind of like walk down these these stones as they like wobble, as as you're like no 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 no, uh, your way away. Uh, yeah, and you're uh you're you're safe. It doesn't pursue you down um those rocks, but it, it like it like stops there and roars and beats its chest, um and uh they they know you're here, and uh who is they? Find out after our first break here. All right, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll be back in six minutes for more Jungle Crawl Classics. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out, and we'll see you guys on the other side. 